Well, today on WCR Nation, the window cleaning podcast, we're going to talk about me. I've not done one of these episodes, so if you know anything about me or know nothing about me, let's talk about me and why maybe you would even want to listen to me. So either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? What's going on to all the cool kids? By the way, you guys have been going crazy letting me put orders in. High five to all the brand new cool kids that are out there that let me put their uh, orders in. If it's your first time, have a look around. Lots of episodes, three straight years of content, some of it good, some of it not good. This may not be hit out of the park because it's about me and I hate that, but either way, stay tuned, listen to everything, and hopefully you dig it. Uh, And again, if you are one of the cool kids, if you're part of the nation, what is up, yo? High fives to you guys. You guys are the ones that watch every episode and you let me put the orders in because that's how I make my cheddar, which you're about to find out. So thank you very much uh, for letting me put orders in anything window cleaning related. My number 862-312-2026. It's a cell phone. Call me. Text me. Tell me everything's in your cart. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. Yes. I forgot last week. I'm going to try real real hard not to forget this week. So either way, um, that's the whole spiel. Now, I want to start off this episode by saying... I've gone three plus years of doing these and I've not ever done an episode like this. And the reason is, is I think it's ludicrous. It doesn't matter who I am or what I do, but a lot of you ask, I would say at least a couple times a month, people are asking, they want some podcasts about me and blah, blah, blah. And I get it. I get it. But just remember, I'm still just some guy with a microphone. It doesn't matter. What I say is not necessarily right. It's just my thoughts. What you're doing is right. Maybe you tailor some things from there. Um, But this is the full of it episode. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, who I am. A lot of you know kind of who I am. um, But I just got a message actually maybe like three days ago from somebody who was like, Hey, I didn't know you sold a window cleaning company. That makes you more credible. Well, I guess. But here's the thing. Keep in mind... That when I do these episodes, they're for entertainment, man. Hopefully you learn something cool. Uh, Hopefully they do help you and hopefully you make a billion dollars from them. Uh, Different things we talk about, but it doesn't mean that everything I say is right. Remember, there is nothing out there, no matter who the person is or what kind of Fortune 500 company they've run. None of that matters. Uh, It's all people in the content. What works for me doesn't necessarily work for you and blah, blah, blah. Um, Protect my butt. All that fun stuff. So... Either way, let's let's just get going on this episode. Uh, not looking forward to the episode here, but either way, let's start off. If you guys got questions, comment down below. Remember, on YouTube, it helps the algorithm if you like thumbs up the video. And if you're on YouTube, comment. Just say, yo, what's up? Ryan Fuster, one of the like OG dudes who's watched, I'm pretty sure, every episode, or at least comments in every episode, he just gives like... A thumbs up emoji in the comments. It records it as a comment. It helps the videos. We want these to hit everybody. So, man, we do that. If you got more comments or questions, more importantly, ask below. Ask the questions. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Didn't even think of that. But uh, anyway, so number five is what do I do now? So as a lot of you know, because I am uh, your rep, I work for Window Cleaning Resource. That's windowcleaner.com. I imagine you found the website. It is huge. The forum is huge. The Facebook groups that we kind of run and moderate are pro window cleaning, uh, window cleaning f- uh, newbies, and pressure washing resource. We also have Window Cleaning Resource Association, which is an awesome association. Uh, basically, we don't have like meetings and weird things like that. It gets you a discount for products. It gets you uh, downloaded templates and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, check out the WCRA. It'll port you back. Um, and uh, we also, as you know, I have a part somewhat in the huge convention as far as doing a lot of media. I'm on media 
I have a face for radio, so I'm not quite sure why I do so many videos, but, uh, but what it is is I have a degree in radio broadcasting, so um, sometimes I'm easy to listen to, sometimes. So that's why you see me a lot of places. Basically, my only job at the moment at all, and it has been for the past few years, is just a salesperson with Window Cleaning Resource. So uh, that is what I do. That's how I make my money, and that is how I afford really cool Jimi Hendrix shirts with uh, playing a xylophone. Anyway, so by the way, that's why I always do the plug for putting your uh, sales through me because I have to remind you guys and be in front saying, hey, I am a salesperson. Keep that in mind. Now, if you guys have dealt with me as a salesperson, I hope, I really, really, really hope, by the way, comment down below if it's true or it's false, but my biggest, biggest goal is as a salesperson, because we have bad names anyway, I want to put out all the information and answer every and all questions you have, but I don't ever want to force you into a certain product. It's just not my dig. It's just not my, my way of doing things. And I think it's, I would never, ever, ever want anybody to think that I scam them or do anything. I've had one person in the four years I've done this who said that uh, he thought I scammed him and it's because a gutter vac did not work in his area. Um, he tried it uh, once for about five minutes and said that it didn't work. So anyway, other than that guy, which you can't appeal to everybody, I guess. I've never been called the scammer and I really try to just tell you what's up. And I'm going to tell you if something sucks. If you call me and you go, hey, what about, I'm not even going to say a product, <laughs> but there's products out there. If I'm talking on the phone or shooting you a text, like, listen, not everything's great. Not everything's out of the, uh, out of the ballpark. I don't like everything, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to like the same stuff I do, but that's who I am as a salesman. That's what I do. That's how I make my cheddar. So, if it, again, if you ever have questions, you can always ask, but that's what I do. My main job. Some people always say, um, oh, do you... Do you make enough money doing that? Uh, yeah, I do all right. I do all right. I am living, right? Um, YouTube doesn't pay. I don't monetize any of my YouTube stuff, just so you guys know. None of the YouTube stuff is monetized, I'm pretty sure, on all the different channels and venues. Uh, I do do some things with um, um, uh, Responsibit. I put their uh, link up in some things. I love Responsibit. Love Responsibit. Um, and uh, they're in like an affiliate program, I think. Uh, I haven't checked out. I, I don't do that stuff for money. So I don't know that I've ever made money on that. But as far as videos, I don't make any money from this content. Three years of content putting it out there. What I do is do this so that uh, eventually you guys want to call me and maybe I can help you in the sales side. But if you don't ever call me and never use me for sales, that's cool too. I hope any of this stuff helps you out because when I was starting, I didn't have all this content. Uh, this was pre like internet ish area. Right? So hopefully the content helps. But either way, speaking of pre-internet era, era, what's my history? What did I do? What have I done window cleaning related? And I've probably done a few things, right? I've gotten married, had kids. By the way, I'm married and have kids. But um, business-wise, what have I done? So about 15 years ago, I started a window cleaning company um, out of Wisconsin. And um, I ran that up until about four years ago in September and uh, was going great. It was, it was awesome. I've done video content for actually Window Cleaning Resource for the past maybe 10 years on and off. I'm not going to tell you the old shows because you can still find them and it's pretty, pretty bad before you had cameras that were halfway decent. Um, but I did a lot of video content. Again, tried to help. There's, there's something that's really, really amazing the first time you realize that you can help someone, like somebody asks a question, you're new, maybe you've been in this for a year, and another new guy, or even somebody who maybe in longer than you goes, hey, man, can you, you know, how, how do you how do you water feed French windows, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, I know the answer. I can help. That moment of being able to help then somebody else is huge. So I, I've kind of always done that. I've always tried to help as much as possible and uh, that's what I did. But I started my business uh, 15 years ago. It, September was 15 years. Um, and uh, one day I went to Mooresville, North Carolina. And it was a family trip. It was the only vacation I've ever planned. And we were supposed to go here to Mooresville. 
We're supposed to go to uh, Myrtle Beach and then to Nashville and go home. That's kind of our big loop we were going to do. And there was like eight shark attacks on Myrtle Beach that week we were there. And we just were like, yeah, we should maybe not go in the ocean. So we ended up staying in Mooresville a little bit longer. There were some friends that had moved down. And uh, they had moved pretty recently. So we are just like, hey, we're going to crash a day or two. Ended up staying a while. Found out I love the schools. I love the area. Boom. Next thing we know, we want to move here. So uh, on our drive back, which is 13 hours, I decided I was going to sell my business. And I had 13 hours of quiet, not all 13, but kids were sleeping, wife was sleeping, and we drove over the night. So I had a lot of time to think of how I was going to do this. And with my company, um, we had a operations officer. And uh, among all the other employees, he was the top employee. And uh, I went in the next day, it was the following Monday, and I said, dude, let me ask you a question. Would you ever want to buy this company? He was like, yes, of course I would, but I don't have the cheddar. So we worked out a plan. We'll talk about that later. Did really, really well, and that is why I sold my company. Now, in the whole plan, we had a payout and things like that, uh, but that's why I sold my company. I sold it to him, and it was super easy. And I wish to anybody who's selling their company... Um, I had better, you know, oh man, it was trials and tribulations. Here's how it was. It was so easy for us. Uh, it worked. We worked out a deal that I'll talk about later. Um, that works for everybody. So it was super, super good. As far as pure water goes, I've been in pure water for about 12 years. My first pure water system that I ever ran was a solid DI tank, which by the way, was a three quarter cube tank. I blew through that tank in seven hours on one job. I was a well I didn't know any better. It was a long time ago. And that's $181 in resin that I blew on my first job. And now let me rephrase. That was my first job with the DI, pure water in general. Screwed it up. It was a used system. Of course, I was that guy. That everybody is. Like, I got to get into it as cheap as possible. Realized real quick everything I bought was garbage. Rebought a new system that following summer. Uh, and I've been in pure water ever since. The first full job I had with my RODI system, um, I got a four, and ended up being more of like a five-ish story complex right on Lake Michigan, and um, it was a winter job, which wasn't super awesome anyway. We had a lift on site, and it was this, uh, or I'm sorry, we didn't have a lift on site, um, and it was this giant job it was a construction clean they had all the lifts on there two days prior took all the lifts off because we were doing this water fed thing and uh you know i knew a thing or two about water fed and uh the the job was on a wednesday thursday and we handed keys over on monday so we were the last ones there i mean there was a couple guys finishing up on the ground level stuff and and whatever we got to the job and our equipment could not reach the job could not reach the top of the window so we lost thousands and thousands of dollars worth of that job because we couldn't perform they had to then call somebody and we never of course got work from them ever again because we couldn't handle it so if you ever call me and i tell you my ptsd story about waterfed poles and why you should always have a little bit more than you think than not enough that's why that's my waterfed love waterfed i've been in waterfed ever since um our business itself we did window cleaning pressure washing uh, house washing. Uh, later, this is probably now maybe six, seven years ago, we brought on roof cleaning. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's all that we kind of did up until when I sold. Uh, right now, I do not own a business anymore. No window cleaning business. I don't own a window cleaning business. It's still hard to say that. Again, this happened in September, so it should be a time that I'm not there, but I still sometimes say we, like I still own it. So that's my history on business. So if you ever got questions on uh, the business itself or things, I hope to say I'm a little bit qualified. We've gone through some really bad times. We've gone through some really good times. As a company, I went into my accountant because um, my accountant was horrible and at the time was a friend of like my dad, right? So uh, we go in, we give, them all the, give her all the paperwork. This is like in March. Uh, she calls us in three days before tax, the April 15th. We go in and she goes, wow, you guys did really good. Yeah. yeah. She goes, you guys had just increased so much. It was crazy. 
So yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. She said, well, here's what you owe. And uh, drop this giant, like, 30,000, oh, I was a little under that. It was like 20, 20 something thousand dollar bill that I then owed in three days. Yes. So again, PTSD and stories of things that have uh, uh, kind of ruined me, that's one of them. Uh, I had three days to come up with 20 grand. This is not, I was not rolling in the dough at that time. Um, so yeah, PTSD is tough. As far as bad stories go, that's one. I got a ton of bad stories. I got a ton of good stories. Uh, but overall, I hope I got some knowledge. So that's a little bit of the history. Uh, and somebody was asking about hobbies and what do I do. A lot of you guys know that I am a mountain biker and I also do woodworking. Um, I do woodworking in the winter. It's just too hot in the summer. I don't. Um, but I got a nice woodworking shop. And uh, bike-wise, I mountain bike in the summer. And uh, I ride a uh, 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson C. Um, I ride that. Uh, that's the carbon fiber frame Santa Cruz. It's a great bike. Uh, that is a 27 and a half. Um, that is on I-9 hubs. Um, and uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. I got some Envy bars and uh, you know, a bunch of th upgrades on the bike. Cool. If you're into mountain bikes, we'll talk sometime. Super cool. Uh, as far as woodworking goes, I got a shop and I got some nice tools. I got, uh, you know, um, saw, uh, saw stop table saw and I have a, um, some fast tool stuff if you know about that. Anyway, I got a bunch of the kind of brands. I like to know that I have good equipment and the things that I like to do. Unfortunately, not always can you go and buy the equipment right away, but uh, if you're ever talking to me and I say, hey, well, they say, what's your favorite pole? And I say, it's the zero micro ultra and they go yeah of course you'd say that well yeah of course i'd say that obviously it's one of the best poles it's in my opinion the best pole that there is but uh, i like equipment that's gonna last if you talk to me i can also talk to you about a zero pro basic or a tucker ego or any of the other stuff that's not on the same tier level we could talk about it, pros and cons and tell you what's up that's my hobbies that's what I'm into in the equipment that I personally have. As far as uh, water-fed equipment, I wouldn't even call this a hobby, but stuff that I've had. I run Zero Piers. I have uh, Zero X2. I was running a Zero uh, X2. I have a Hydrocart Electric and also a Hydro Tube uh, by IPC Eagle. Um, you guys know my thoughts on the Hydro Tube. It's a good system. I love IPC Eagle. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the short amount you need to go. It's 40 hours before you have to do a change on it for filters, so not super good. But I've run every type of poles from those one reach poles that no one can talk about. Um, I had a bunch of those when they first kind of came out. Got rid of those pretty quick. Uh, but I've run uh, IPC Eagle sectionals. I've run um, zero poles. I've had Tucker poles. Um, I've had Excel poles and Ionic poles. I mean, I've had all of the different poles, not to mention every pole that we sell and basically every pole that's on the market for the most part, I've used at some point. It's another thing that's kind of interesting. If you are a geardo or somebody who likes nice things in the hobbies you do, then you're also very curious about the stuff you don't have. That's where Waterfed comes in. If you want to talk about a gardener pole, we don't sell those, but I know about them. I've used them. If you want to talk about the, the reach pole that nobody could talk about, I know about them. I've actually uh, owned them for a time myself. So hopefully that all helps me in kind of everything. So those are my hobbies. If you like any of those hobbies, let's talk shop down below. That'd be super, super cool. Uh, my newest thing that I'm into now is I bought... Uh, uh, land uh, in the mountains uh, outside of Boone, North Carolina, if you know where that is. Um, so, uh, yeah, I have land. We put a new trailer on. I also have a Pioneer 704 side-by-side. -side. That's the four-seater. Um, look that up. That's super, super awesome. That's the Honda Pioneer 704. Um, I also have a uh, an older, I think it's a 2014, 2013 Honda, uh, 450, uh, TRD 450R, if you're into ATVs, I have one of those, that's an race ATV, not, like, super conducive to woods, but I have that, um, yeah, we got a new trailer, 
uh, if you're into any of that, uh, I, I do like uh, the trailer stuff. I'm really on that kick now for that. Uh, we have Jayco, um, uh, Jayco Bunkhouse up there. So anyway, that's what I love. My thing that I do is on the weekends, which a lot of people call uh, or text, I do one time a day where I go through everything on a Saturday usually, and then Sundays I try not to. I work a lot. You guys know uh, I am working from uh, our meeting starts at 8.15. I then go to the gym. Then I come back and I start work at 10. That's when I shower, go to the grocery store, everything. 10 o'clock, I'm on in front of my computer all the way until 11 o'clock at night. So 13 hours there. Before when COVID hit and I wasn't doing the gym, then I was starting at 8.15 and running all the way to 11. That's a long day. So if you do ever contact me on a Saturday and I don't get back to you right away, Saturday or Sunday, remember, we do not ship Saturdays or Sundays. We can't. FedEx and UPS do not do pickups. Uh, Our office staff and processing departments are not even in on the weekends because we can't send anything out. So don't worry on the weekends if you hit me up on Saturday at 1030 at night and I don't get back to you till Sunday or heck, even Monday morning. We ship out Monday from what happened over the weekend. So a little bit about me. I'm probably in the mountains and I probably don't have reception. If you want, shoot me text that always works better, especially from the in and out. But if you got mountain land or we called in Wisconsin up north or you're into side-by-sides, ATVs, woodworking or bike, let me know. I love hobbies, man. You need to have something in your life that gets your brain out of everything that it is. You're so focused, especially with ADD. If you're a business owner with ADD, 100% serious issue. Most business owners have ADD. Most good business owners really do. I'm sorry if you don't. Be happy you don't, but I have ADD. I need to have a thousand things going at one time for my body to be calm. So I love to be able to just turn everything off because... And it hurts to turn it off. But because I'm so focused the rest of the week, my weekends, kind of a little bit for me. So in advance, sorry if I'm not as fast on the weekends. But that's what I'm doing. I'm up on the land, like cutting wood. And we got a bunch of waterfalls in the property and stuff. I'm just hanging out with the family. So anyway, those are my hobbies. It's kind of my life. Like I said, I'm married. Uh, I've been married now for, oops. <laughs> 15, 16 years. My wife doesn't watch. Don't worry. It's like 16 years, I think. Uh, I got two daughters. I have a 14-year-old. Yeah. I have a uh, 11-year-old. And the 11-year-old just got braces. The 14-year-old's already through all of the braces stuff. But, yeah. That's my life. My mom also moved down with us. Remember, I moved from Wisconsin. Six months later, she moved down and we were like, hey, you should live with us. So we bought a bigger house that everybody could fit in. And I live with my wife, my daughters, my mom. Uh, The only thing I have is my boy dog named Spuds. Uh, He is my buddy and he is the other dude in the house. And we just chill and like, you know, when the estrogen's thick, you know how it gets, right? Uh, No, but the He's the one that helps me uh, just kind of chill. So he also loves the land up north. So we go up there and uh, hang out. So that's my life. That's basically everything in a nutshell. A little bit more about me. So you know the most conceited kind of episode ever. But the number one thing in my top five of my life is how I sold my company. Now, I've never done a episode just on selling a company, I don't think. And the reason is, is there's so many ways to do it. I've bought in my life probably four, five, six companies, something like that. I've sold my company once, and then I started another one in North Carolina that I ran for ooh, maybe three months. Basically sold all that. So I wouldn't say I profited. I did profit on the second one, but not a ton. So I will say I sold one company when in realistic terms, I kind of sold two. Uh, but... Uh, The first company I sold, like I said, I went back to my operations officer and said, hey, do you want to own a company? And for him, it basically went like, yes, but I don't have a down payment. I don't have any of that stuff. I just kind of dropped on my lap. But I knew the guy. I know him. I know about him and all that fun stuff. And I knew that he was the type of person that uh, I would love to see have it. 
Uh, and he's very trustworthy. He's been with me. He knows the whole company inside and outside. He's the reason that I got to go on vacation because he was taking care of everything when I was gone, right? But here's the thing. When you can make a deal with somebody that is perfect for both of you, you have to go with it. Now, my particular deal, and I'm not going to get too much into it just to protect kind of him and all that fun stuff, but uh, I sold my company for zero money down. Basically, September 1st, I high-fived him, gave him the deuces, and I went and sat at home. And he did the exact same thing that he always did, but he made a bunch more money. And I was technically on payroll for four years. Four years. My four-year buyout was like I was a consultant. So he called me a lot and was like, yo, like I got questions, you know, especially in the beginning, things were a little bit more because he didn't know or wasn't confident quite on everything. So um, basically from there, I lasted four years. Uh, towards the end, he would call me maybe once every month or two, uh, but I still would get a paycheck every single week. So for him, it was as cheap as having an employee with no benefits. I didn't get any benefits from there. Uh, another side note, my wife is actually a nurse. She is in, um, uh, she does like chemotherapy and, and all those things. And uh, she has insurance and she's always had insurance. So I've never had to get my own insurance, but all my employees had insurance. But we know that's expensive. So what I did was in a, as a consultant, it was a different kind of deal. Um, it was a full lawyer drawn purchase, but in a buyout. So I left one day making money. He stayed there and he made now his money and all the rest of the money. So for him, it was great. He didn't have any front down payment. I took all the liability, which sucked. But again, in the end, uh, did make, got a better situation because I took the liability. And by the way, if you don't know about selling businesses, if you take no liability, you make less money. If you take all the liability, you make more money. So with that being said is if you do a buyout, say, hey, I'll buy your company, I'll buy your route, and I'll pay you 50% on completion, they might look at that and go, okay, yeah, okay, well, I'll do that. Now you're paying somebody 50% on to do their work. Basically, you're doing the work. You're getting it done. You're only collecting 50% and that has to pay for the labor and everything else. He's making 50%. It's because on completion means that you're only going to give it to them when there is no liability. You have to do the work to be able to pay them. So there's no liability on your end. There you go. Now, if you went to somebody and said, hey, I will buy your entire route for, you know, four grand right now, which we'll say that that's like, you know, a quarter of the year wouldn't even be, usually it's like 10 to 20% of the yearly. You can go up to 30% or a third um, of the yearly because you're paying it all up front, meaning that person's got no liability. So they're going to make less money. You're taking all the liability, so you're going to save money. Anyway, there's a big babble on that. But that's what happened. So I took all the liability, ran the company. He bought assets on top of the purchase price. Uh, he bought assets and all the trucks. So basically he gave uh, loans and purchases for um, some of the equipment and trucks. And then some of the equipment and trucks were legally mine until the end. And those were put into it. Um, so that's kind of how we did that. And literally one day he called in uh it was just before september 1st and he was like hey uh our deal's done in like two weeks i'm like oh yeah cool you got any other questions He's like no nah, man cool well good you're gonna like make you know you just got rid of an employee that you've been paying for four years so you're gonna get a pay increase yeah so that's how it was super super easy super in super out how much did i make on my company uh it was six figures but I don't need to necessarily go into it. It was a very comfortable six figures. It was good. It was a good buyout. It was a great deal for him. Uh, zero liability. He just literally went one day from making normal pay to making his normal pay and everything else. And I basically got to retire for four years. But I can't sit still. You know that? That's how I with then was still making uh, the doing the consultant. I started a pressure washing company here. And I was doing WCR, just too many things. So consulting started getting less. I sold my other equipment there, and now I just do sales like I mentioned. Whew. So anyway, 
There you go. If you got questions and anything we babbled about, there you go. This is, like I said, the most odd episode we've done. But I don't think that I've ever actually told you guys what's up and like what I do. Like there's little blurbs because it really just isn't about me ever. It's I'm just a guy with a microphone, like I said. I'm just a guy who shares my stories and just like anybody else who likes to talk, they'd share their stories too. So it really doesn't matter what I've done or what I haven't done. Uh, these are just ideas that I give you. So there's a little bit more information. If you like this episode, do let me know. If you thought uh, that you want to give me that virtual high five, be a cool kid. Put your orders in through me. Put it all in your cart and be like, yo, Jersey, this is so-and-so with XYZ. Everything's in my cart. The code this week, the code this week is going to be nobody. That's the code for 5% off. If you tell me nobody then you get it. Because guess what? I'm a nobody. So this really whole thing didn't matter. It just was some information, interesting information for a lot of you. Um, but that's the code. Let me know that code. Be like, yo, it's all in my cart. Put my order in. The code is nobody. I'm going to get you 5% off and a free shipping over 49 bucks right now, which is super, super awesome. So let me know. My number is 862-312-2026. And I know hundreds and hundreds of you have that in your phone under Jersey. I'm probably the only Jersey that you know, uh, but save that number right now. Pull out your phone, I'll wait. Okay, it's 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text, call me, say what's up, comment on the video, thumbs up, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill, there you go. You know some more about me. I hope I didn't kill too many of your brain cells, but until next week, go out there and be epic.